Why do you think they jump ship from Ron DeSantis to Nikki Haley? Like you said, the first part of the election versus yeah. the second part. She's been very hawkish. I, mean, I think it just became you, quickly evident that Ron DeSantis momentum has no. Well, yeah, I mean he 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 has no chance. They, they've concluded, I think, correctly. I mean, I think the same is true about Nikki Haley too. But it became so obvious that with that much money behind him, and we're talking like mega amounts of money that have never been spent mm -hmm. in a Republican primary before, if that couldn't lift up this dead weight that's still hanging on the ground, then, okay, that's a lost cause. Let's just find the next puppet we can prop up. And, you know, I think that Nikki Haley came out to be actively pro-war. I mean, there's a woman who calls her heels ammunition. This is a woman who, you know, I think when she comes, I mean, I, I felt like saying on the stage, you know, I'm, I'm not some third world nation that you want to come bomb, right? That's, that's, that's what she sees. The bombs explode, her bank account grows. That's the kind of person that says, okay, if she has really greased the wheels of her own bank mm -hmm. account to do the thing that we want America to be doing, that's our new puppet. She has no chance, right? I mean, this woman's going absolutely nowhere in this election, but it's the new thing that the establishment has chosen to see if they can't pour the same cash that they were throwing at Ron DeSantis to prop up this new puppet. And, you know, I think this one's worse than the than the Ron DeSantis puppet. Ron DeSantis, I, I wouldn't call him corrupt, right? I, I actually think he was a good governor. I think he's a good dude, actually, like at his, at his heart. I think his family is a good family. I think he's been exploited. I think that's actually what's happened here is this man would have just continued being the governor of this state and probably done a pretty good job of it. And then the establishment decided, said, no, 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 that's not your choice. You will be the chosen one to run for president. You don't think he wanted to? I don't think he wanted to. Really? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 I'm, you know, I'm giving you my opinion on sure, this. So I, sure, sure, yeah. Certain things I can tell you are hard facts. Everything we've talked about so far about Ron McDaniel on all that corruption, that's hard fact. Now I'm just giving you my opinion here. I don't think he I don't think he in his heart would have wanted to do this or felt called to do that. I think he was dragged into this. And it was a form of sort of abuse of a guy who wasn't wired for this, right? I mean, he doesn't have the personality for it. He's not, I don't think that he has a personal appetite for it. I think he cares about the country. I think that he has, you know, he served the country in the military as a lawyer and otherwise. He seems, he seems to be a service-oriented person. I think he was doing a good job in Florida. I think he cares about Florida. You know, I think once they started putting him up to this, then it changes your mentality and you use Florida as a pedestal to then achieve national ambition. But him left to himself without the establishment tainting him, he would have just been another of you know many good governors across the country. That's the right role for someone like him. Or he's an executor. You know, in some ways, people use this expression. <laughs> they mean it as a slight. You know, he's, he's about somebody they could say he's all talk, no action. In some ways, Ron DeSantis was for a while all action and no mm -hmm. talk, and and I don't mean that as a negative. That could you could take that as a positive, but when you're talking about running for president of the United States, you have to be able to articulate a vision of who we are and where we're headed. That's part of the job, and that's not a guy who has it. But they propped him up, they forced him into it. But I would not I would not call him really, you know, corrupt. I think he has to dance to the tune of his donors just because that's the way the game is played, and it's the mother's milk of politics, and so he does that like any other puppet would. But the person who's actually corrupt in this, like outright corrupt, is Nikki Haley. Really? Yeah, she's corrupt. And, and, and in the way that, like, Joe Biden is corrupt. Is that when you said you made money with Boeing board? Yeah, I mean, millions. if you just kind of go through the facts yeah. here, right? I mean, just like, this is not this is somebody privately benefiting from their public service, right? This is wrong. It's wrong when Hunter Biden does it. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> all these people, including Nikki Haley, will talk about Hunter Biden. Interesting how that works. Joe Biden's son. She's happy to talk about him without talking about the corruption in her own family. So she she's South, governor of South Carolina, does special favors for this company called Boeing her entire time while she's in office. After her time in public service, she has a nice little cush board seat, ready, warm, waiting for her at Boeing. A private company, a private a company flies around a private jet. I think it was a, some, some Nephron Pharmaceutical, some pharmaceutical company, I forget what name it was. I'd never heard of it. It's not even some major company, and I was come from that industry, but it's some random company that's getting, I don't know what the name of it is, um, that I haven't heard of. It's okay, but flying her around on their private jet, making their private jet available to her, get state contracts from that governor. And, and I could go on. I mean, this is just a consistent pattern, okay? This person has repeatedly milked and done favors for people who have scratched her back. She does her short-lived 
you know, cup of coffee stint at the UN, okay? Very short-lived stint. Her real foreign policy experience wasn't her time at the UN. It was the millions she made afterwards. After she steps down, her family starts a military contracting firm, Allied Defense LLC. If the mainstream press were doing their that up, decisions, Rob. Allied Defense should have to disclose who their clients are. I did something that no normal business people don't do. I've put up 20 years of my tax records, personal tax filings. She should put up 20 years of her personal tax filings and put up the clients of Allied Defense LLC. If you're running for U.S. president, tell us who the damn clients are of the military contractor that you started, presumably using your connections from the U.N. Starts the military contracting firm. Starts, again, then serving on the board of Boeing. Ends up giving secretive speaking fees from foreign actors while also running a military contracting firm. Think about that. It's Hillary Clinton on steroids. You could just go down the list. She's somebody who literally during this presidential campaign, as far as I know, it's unprecedented in U.S. presidential election history, collecting corporate stock options while running for U.S. president. And now she's a multimillionaire. And by the way, what I left out was at the time she left the U.N., she and her family were drowning in debt. By the way, for somebody who's an accountant, that's a discussion for another day. But goes from being and wants to run the U.S. and says that she's the candidate who's going to fix our national debt problem. Comes out of government, drowning in personal debt. Uses connections to start a military contracting firm without naming their clients. Somebody who actually then joins the board of Boeing, the company whose back she scratched forever while governor of South Carolina, another military contractor, speaking fees, including with foreign actors, Hillary Clinton style, collecting stock options while running for U.S. president, all of that. Then he merges, just like Joe Biden, a multimillionaire. Mm. These are not the people, whether it's Biden or Haley, these are not the people we should want deciding whether to send your kids to die fighting somebody else's war. It's disqualifying. At the very least, be transparent about it. And then you get to the question of the press. Where is the press asking the questions? Okay. What are the clients of Allied Defense LLC? It's a dereliction of your duty as the, pre as, as the certainly conservative press to ask that basic question. Why shouldn't the American people know who are the clients of the military contracting firm that her fortune bumps up eightfold, becomes a multimillionaire, exploiting her connections at the time at the U.N., now running to be commander in chief on a hawkish worldview, marching us into World War III. We deserve to know. And yet. The same establishment that props up Ronna McDaniel as the chair of the RNC, the same establishment that hires the likes of Kristen Welker to run that debate, the same establishment that tried to prop up Ron DeSantis but realized that even reams of millions could not lift up that dead weight so now has shifted to Nikki Haley, does not want other people like me asking that question, which is why they're so keen to silence me. And that's why she called you scum. Oh, yeah, and I think it's a lot of projection going on there. Yeah, because you hurt the projection. wallet. You hurt the wallet, though. If you think about it, uh, Vivek, that everybody in that stage was pro-war. And, and Pat made a point about a month ago. When you see a thirsty. Yeah, when you see, a, when you see a hospital, Vivek, all those rooms, they're in business. They need sick people to be in there. Yep. We need a war. And it's a conflict of interest if you're a defense contracting your whole family. Her husband, Michael Haley, owns one. It's it, would you it, you become president of Vivek? Would you would you put legislation to like not have oh, that happen? All of this corruption should be banned. You should not be able to lobby the government for ten years until after you've left the government. If you have regulated a company or done a deal with a company, as you do in South Carolina with Boeing, you absolutely should never be able to join the board of that company. Certainly not for ten or twenty years. Okay, you shouldn't be able to trade individual stocks. At, with your own individual investment discretion, mm -hmm. if you're a congressman or a regulator of or that Nancy specific Pelosi. industry, yeah, or Nancy Pelosi, but. But here's the thing, man, because I, I have been very critical of, like, uh, the corrupt Democratic establishment, the Pelosi's, the Biden's, the Hillary Clinton's of the world. But I can't do that with credibility if we have the same problem in our own house, but then you're not supposed to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And here's the thing that, you know, the Republican Party claims to be the party that is against identity politics. I mean, there's an unspoken rule in the Republican Party that if you have two X chromosomes, you got to be careful about going after her. And I get that. I mean, the political consulting class tells tells me that as well in the first couple of debates. Yeah, I've probably got the bad advice, but, you know, she's been – I mean, she's called me four-letter words each of the last few debates, but there's a certain thing if you have two X chromosomes, somehow you're immune from criticism. That's not what the Republican Party stands for. Identity politics, if you're running for U.S. president, you can't handle the heat, you stay out of the kitchen. You want to sit across the table from Xi Jinping? You better be able to confront basic questions like your tax returns or how you made your money or who the clients of Allied Defense LLC are. And how that relates to your foreign policy that 
frankly, makes more money by taking us to war. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.